Evening Stock Show right here on Westside 89.6 FM on the dial www.thisiswestside.com around the world. I am Cheryl Blue and right now I have... I need some kind of sirens or something. I've got Lennox from West London in the building. What's going on, Lennox? I'm fine. How are you? How are you doing? I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, he's yeah. thinking I, that was just like a little bit too hard for me. That was too much. That was <laughs> too much. Like it's after eight o'clock. Like no, it's not even after eight o'clock. It's nearly eight o'clock. I'm just gonna calm down. So Lennox, <laughs> talk to me. How are you feeling? I'm great. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm just um, happy to be here. To be honest. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for coming. Thank, thank you, you for no, coming. Thank you. <laughs> gonna come back to you in a minute, but I also want to shout. We've got another body in the studio as well. I'm not going to be as hype for you, <laughs> unless you want me to be. Whatever. <laughs> She's like, Go for it, man. whatever. Hello, I want it. <laughs> she wants it. I'm sorry, I can't do it twice. Oh, <laughs> we have Cool Dip. Yay. Introduce yourself, Cool Dip. Hey, I'm Cool Dip, and uh, well, I'm a youth worker by trade, and yeah, I'm here with Linux because um, I work for Hanslow Youth Service. Okay, so just tell us a little bit about Hounslow Youth Service before we talk a bit more to Lennox. Ah, okay, right, so we're part of the youth provision for the London Borough of Hounslow, where uh, we have loads of youth centres across the borough and youth projects and um, lots of amazing stuff that we do with, and I'm not going to get political about money and budgets, but we do lots of amazing work considering the resources we have. And I met Lennox at one of our events, annual event that happens at Hogarth Youth Centre in Chiswick, which is called Zest for Life, and it's a spoken word uh, competition that happens every year. And Lennox was last year's winner. Wow. So a winner. So Lennox, I mean, talk to us about that. So last year you entered. First off, what prompted you to enter this competition? Well, um, I just felt like I had uh, a talent that I wanted to like um, share with the community. Like that's my my home area. So I just felt like you know what, might as well do it as go well. It. Yeah, go for it. Did you try, Did you need any encouragement from your friends or? You know what, I used to be so shy, but really? um, no. Nah, you don't come across shy. I used to be though. Yeah. I really used to be very shy and like and contained, like an introvert. But um, now. I just felt like, you know what, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in myself, so just go for it, yeah. So you, you're a poet as well as a rapper? Yeah, I'm mostly a rapper. Mostly a yeah. rapper. But do you find, do you sort of think the two kind of cross over? I feel like most of my raps can be recited as poems anyway. Right. Yeah. And is that how you pen them? Do you kind of write them as poems and then just spit them as raps? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much like that, yeah. Even um, last year's um, performance, I actually... Um, used a poem that was actually a rap, but oh. I, I just recited it as a poem because yeah. I had the back in yeah. track. <laughs> so yeah, it was good. But that's the good thing, is it? I mean, if you're yeah. sorry, you're going to say something called it. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that like, because yeah. I was there. I was on the judging panel last year, and I didn't realise that it was actually a rap. Because yeah. I mean, the way that he performed yeah. it as a poem was so powerful. It was it was amazing, by the way. Thank the lyrics you. were Gave out it a of different this world. Spin. Yeah, they were. They brought tears to people's eyes. What, what, was, yeah, what was it about? It was really quite powerful. It was a story about. Um, a young boy who was going through um, like the troubles of the streets and stuff, wow. and a girl who like lost her mum, but then she like um, sought to like link in boys just for comfort and stuff like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is a lot of people's reality. It yeah. was really because, good. as you said, called it that kind of you know hit home with a lot of people, and it's you know a slice out of what what does happen on the streets. Yeah. The, I mean, the lyrics to me were they were they were, they were you know really positive stuff and yeah. that's what zest for life i was going to say i know that there was a you know on the flyer it yeah. says positive lyrics only yeah lennox how do, i mean would you say all of your lyrics are positive they're real i, I, yeah. I want to say they're positive like but they're really shockingly real because right. i don't swear never right. in my in my rap but like I wouldn't say they're positive. I'll just say that they just, it's just how I vent my feelings and basically what's on my mind, I say it, you know. But I suppose in that there is positivity, isn't it, right? Yeah. Called it. Mm. You know, the yeah. fact that you're speaking what you see or what you experience or what yeah. you know, what you hear, that is kind of sending some kind of positive message to somebody else that might be going through the same thing. So, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Because I think that's what it is. Uh, um, you know, people relate to things that are real. Yeah. And you know, you know, anything, be it you know, musicians, artists, on TV, films. When something is depicted quite realistically, people can relate to that. And I think what what Lennox's li uh, uh, lyrics are are quite real, and and that's why people relate to it. And it doesn't have to be like you know, 
pop your whatever, yeah. whatever. I don't know, I'm too old. I don't know lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool day. Come I'm on. Like from, like, I'm from the old Ice Tea, Ice Cube. Oh, days. wow. Yeah. But Ice Cube, you, you heard him on that track before, right, yeah. with the game. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Ice Cube's still around. Still listen to them. And I think, you know, you just said you still listen to, like, Ice Cube yeah. and Ice Tea. And I think if you are a rapper or someone that, like, appreciates lyrics and words and stuff, we're going to talk a bit, little bit more about this later on. Uh, we've got like, a, a rapper MC in the building as well. So she's going to get involved in the conversation. You know, it's important to be able to appreciate like I suppose where rap and sort of the whole emceeing and poet poetry kind of comes from to yeah. be able to kind of move forward with it as well I don't know yeah so just back to the actual performance itself so wh how did you choose that particular piece it was something that was um just on my mind on the day and this and to be honest it was a true story that happened to my one of my friends both of them like mm. so I felt like that was the time to like share it so that's how I came about doing it. And would you say you were shy before that performance, or did you overcome Ooh. your shyness long before that? No, I was. I was ready. I was ready. You're as soon ready. as I, as long as I'm ready, I'm I'm not You're shy at all. Yeah. yeah. I, but if I'm not prepared, then I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm really shy. I'm really scared. But yeah. But it's good to have a little bit of nerves, I think. Yeah, you definitely. Know. You know, you always get them jitters, but yeah, this one kind of keeps you. You know, just keeps you stable. In, yeah. the, in the right place. Yeah. So so Lennox, can uh, can we get a few bars then? I mean, you know. Uh, okay, fine. Is that cool? Right, I'm going to take the music down. How long do you need? Uh, 30 seconds. 30 maybe. seconds, right, I'm going to pull the music do right Do you want to do it like, um, without like an instrument or just by itself? I just want some acapella. Okay, cool. All um, right, here we go. Waking up in a cold world, wasn't told how to survive here. You see, my fear is to freeze. Living on my knees, can't sneeze because of disease. is setting up a reason to put me in a hospital bed. Backstab the dead, I call it tree. Son, you live no regrets. Can't step to a man who has no respect for his family. And this is actuality, we live in a society where people's notoriety is getting the fibula snap. Try walk away, but you keep coming back. Keep coming back to the same life that you used to live. What would you give to stay at home, be with your kids? What would you give though? PS3, non Nintendos came and gone in your absence. It's madness. So where's daddy? My son, we can still be a family. Your father right now, see, he's hitting the town with a woman that's calling him daddy. Ah, uh, cause you go through life with a height to provide for a first that you hold you beside. You can't even visualise it, but you know you must quench it. Made you forget the ones you believed in, get you invest the ones that are deceiving. Reach and wreck the show, this is the meaning. But who cares how we die, cause we die in the end and the end is nigh. Mom, please believe that your boy will shine. Even if the money lies in the lion's eyes, I'll rip it out so I can provide. Ah, oh, cause we can't just sit from the fountain of youth and just be. You too may prove to be worthy, looking at the page that foretold of a story. Yeah, sound like that. <laughs> Woo! Wow, Lennox, I was getting into that. I love that. I mean, as I said to you outside, I mean, I, I write poetry myself, so yeah. words and lyrics, I'm all over it. I loved that. And Thank you know what? I felt, I felt the passion in it as well. Yeah, it's true. It's all, all of it. Everything I was saying was true and yeah. it applies to me. You know what, we're going to hold that thought. We're going to jump into a really quick music break. We're going to come back and So, Lennox, music. before we went into that short music break, we had a bit of a... Um, a cappella from you, uh, mm -hmm. a piece. Was that the piece that you performed? No, this, that was a different one. That was something yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. And was that inspired by, again, personal um, experience? Yeah, basically just, it was about uh, my mum, how I want to be there for my mum and just how um, oh. growing up without a father affected me, basically yeah. like that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Very powerful stuff, Lena. Seriously, yeah. I think... Um, Obviously, you're very talented. You won last year's Zest for Life. And just to drive home again what Zest for Life is, I mean, could it, can you just let the listeners know if yeah. they can still get involved as well? Yeah, for sure. Uh, OK, so Zest for Life is an annual spoken word competition. You can, um, you can do poetry, you can MC, you can um, sing. Yeah, it's up to you. Rap, whatever you want. And it is happening this Thursday, the 29th. Right. at Hogarth Youth Centre, which is at the bottom of Dukes Road in Chiswick, just off Chiswick High Road. And there are two categories. It kicks off at seven. There are two categories. There's 11 to 15-year-olds and then 16 to 19-year-olds. Right. And, yeah, people can come down and support or get involved. But if they do want to get involved, uh, they can contact uh, the manager at Hogarth before the event just to, to, to list their interest. And... The email is denny.anthony, that's D-E-N-N-Y dot Anthony, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, at hounslow.govgov.uk. Cool, we'll put that out on the Twitter as well, so people can, um, if they want to get involved. And what's the prize? Um, 
Ah, uh, top secret. That. Right, okay. Top secret. You've got to enter to find out. Uh, yeah. But that sounds like such a brilliant opportunity, and all, you know, simply for the fact that you've got lots of people, lots of creatives in the same space. It's a great, I suppose, networking yeah. opportunity as well. Well, this is it. It's, it's up and a, coming. Yeah, and well, because my role really within the youth service actually is I'm the art, youth arts coordinator. Right. So that's how I get involved with Zest every year and how I kind of try and get people to come down and do things like this at Westside. Uh, I was here earlier doing, uh, uh, well, with young people and they were doing a radio presenting course here right. at Westside. So, um, yeah. So that's what you do. Some of the stuff that, yeah, it's kind of the, some of the enrichment they get out of getting involved with the youth service, getting involved with Zest. Yeah. Um, this is something I promised Lennox about a year ago oh, when he won. Bless. So many things got in the way, so we finally made it But down. you're here now, Yay. Lennox, and we are happy to have you, honestly. <laughs> it's been such a blessing so far. I mean, so you won last year, and this year you're, you're sitting on the panel, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so what are you looking for in, in this year's winner? Just original, like originality, if that's a word. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want people to express themselves, you know, just have fun as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So are you kind of like, are you going to be biased and maybe go for like someone that maybe spits or raps? No, or? No, 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 no. I feel like if it's coming from the heart, yeah. then and you you connect with the audience as well, then yeah, definitely I'll go for that. Yeah. Yeah. So what has winning done for you? I mean, what have you got out of this whole experience? Well, I got a decent prize, uh, yeah. which was like um, gift voucher, but oh, nice. we don't so want to say you, too much too much about that. Did was, you bring any to share? Oh, of course, of course, of yeah, course. Yeah. Okay. But, All right. Just and, checking. <laughs> and I got to perform at the Hounslow Youth Awards. Okay. So, yeah, that was really good, and that was a big turnout. So. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's really good. There's a lot of opportunities, so this year could be something else, you know, never know. It, and, sorry, go cool. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, Zest for Life, it's, it's, you know, it's giving young people the platform to be able to have a go at live performance. Because I know from my experience as youth worker, lots of young people have got amazing lyrics and, you know, behind doors will do that or come to the youth centers uh, and use the studios. But to perform live is a whole different ball game. completely different. And this is kind of a platform for that. So, you know, they'll do Zest and then they'll go on and then, like, for example, go on and perform at the Youth Awards, which is a big event every yeah. year. It's over 350 wow. people in the audience and things like that. And, you know, that's my dream is really, I mean, I would love to have like a, just an uh, open mic night for young people wow. on a regular basis. So but it's so possible. Yeah. Do it. It needs to happen. It's so possible. <laughs> yeah. <Do it. laughs> but, you know, you can do these things with. Yeah, yeah, without all of that, not so much. I think it's definitely if you've got the right kind of people in place. But, exactly, yeah, but, yeah, um, no. Like you've, you know, you've got someone like Lennox that's volunteer. more than, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's There you go, need. let's do it, Lennox. I'm do it. <laughs> and then when you do do it, come back and talk about it and yeah. pl plug it and promote it, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, we are just storming up to the top of the hour, which means we've got to take another short break. We have Mad X in the building. We're going to be talking to her. There I go again. I know. It's just... Anyway, we're going to be talking to her um, after the break. And obviously, Nana, so you're going to stick around with us. And we're going to just talk a little bit more about lyrical content in music and how we feel about some of the... Uh, some of the way, like, rappers and singers or whatever are expressing themselves these days. So, of course, this is the Rinse Talk Show with me, Cheryl Blue. I've got Lennox and Cool Dip in the building, and I am going to go... It was actually Leisha, <laughs> Lady Leisha, Queen Speech 4. I love that right here on the west side. This is the Rinse Talk Show with me, Cheryl Blue. 89.6 FM on the dial, www.thisiswestside.com. So if you've just tuned in, I don't know where you have been. We have got Lennox in the building. We have got Cool Dip from Zest for Life, and now we have Can I Get a Moment of Silence? <laughs> Mad X! How you doing, girl? I'm good, thank you. Everything blessed. Yes. Everything nice blessed. to have you. Yeah, thank you for, you know, letting me be on the show still. Yeah, no, yeah I mean, you found it with Eve as well, which is, which is kind of like a point in your favour. Yeah, my sister calls me a homing pigeon, so I find oh, it anyway it. still. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A homing pigeon, you know. Yeah, I know, isn't it? Well, I suppose it's better than being called, I don't know, what's worse than a homing pigeon? <laughs> a lot, basically. Go and call it. I know you got one. A rat? A rat. Oh. Well, I, I, I mean, don't do rats. Rats and spiders. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that, isn't it? We, we don't interact, rats and spiders, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we do not have any kind of relationship at all. Anyway, Mad X, as I said, so glad to have you. So nice of you to join us. We've been speaking to Lennox. Lennox is um, an up-and-coming lyricist, let's just say. He, he raps, he writes poetry, 
It does all that great stuff. And actually, he won um, a competition called Zest for Live last mm -hmm. year. Um, and this year, he's actually uh, on the panel. So he's going to be judging. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if you heard his little freestyle earlier on. Yeah, man, I did. I did. What did you think? Fire. It was fire. Right, See, yeah, there man. you go. <laughs> and that's coming from an established artist, Lennox. I'm telling you. I get a vibe, you know what I mean? I did say that I really liked it. I felt that there was, um, you know, you could feel the passion. And I think with music and any kind of lyrics, when it's been delivered, if you can't feel that passion, just forget about it. It's true, you yeah. have to feel the passion because it's just dead, you know what I mean? And then it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I know you're a passionate lady in your own right, so tell us a little bit about yourself before we kind of get into it. Um, I'm a, a breakbeat, um, sing J, um, MC, DJ. And well, hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> hear this one. How much Thai call? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, they, they put it in the box, but you know what I mean? You can't be defined. Not really, I'm trying to, but, you know. So, which sort of area do you kind of ear more toward? I would say um, anything with a reggae dancehall feel, so whether it's drum and bass, hip-hop, or um, anything like that, mm -hmm. or house, I'm going to put the reggae feel on it, because that's my roots, so. Okay, I'm so you like... forget, you know, like... that's how I learned my skills, you right. know what I mean? Okay, so you kind of, so, okay, so, I don't know, if we were feeling like a bit of a hip-hop vibe, you might do, I, I want to say Busta Rhymes, because he's probably one of the guys, that one of the most popular hip-hop artists that is kind of renowned for, for dropping a little, you know, reggae feel mm -hmm. to music. Is that the kind of angle, or is it completely just reggae? I would say it's maybe a little bit like that, because I would say it's more geared to the sing, more the sing Jane with the rapper in between, you know what I mean? Right. So... Kind of like that, really. So, so kind of, I would say that if you're gonna kind of try to put it somewhere, maybe Buster Rhymes kind of full with a little bit of um, you can say a little bit of um reggae like Sizzler or something like okay. that. Okay. Oh. But a, but a female, but kind of style. You know what I mean? But not that. So I want to say Lady Saw. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd like to say that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not, so she really. was trying to be modest. She was like. Well, you know, sort of. No, okay. right, but, you know what I mean, English... Uh, English, with a, Br British, with a uh, British... With a British... No, a, Br a British twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep it British same way, so... Yeah. And I think it's important that we kind of retain, like, you know, it, it's, it's one thing embracing, like, the music, but... And I think the same can be said for, like, hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's happening now with, like, the UK music scene is big, because it's like, this is our thing. Okay, yeah, you know, hip-hop is whatever, but it's British, it sounds British. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's why, well, it's important to keep it like that. And I think, obviously, the same applies to the genre of music that you're big in. You know, it's obviously, it's got that reggae feel, that reggae vibe. But ultimately, you know, you were born here. Yes, you So you want to keep it, yeah. keep it on that kind of tip. Okay. We're going to talk more about you later. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> we're going to get some uh, freestyles as well for you. Okay. I hope you're ready for that. All right. Yeah. Also. So I have a pillow as well because you know I can't make Lennox do it without. I know that be liberty. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like Lennox is gone. Let's get the uh, instrumental out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. No, definitely a cappella for you. But okay. but okay, so I mean, Kodit was talking about the fact that Zest for Life promotes positive lyrics only in their music. Mm -hmm. I mean, in their performances, people that want to come and perform are more than welcome. Any kind of genre, if you like, provided it's positive. Um, so that kind of made me think, well, how much positivity is actually out there in the music that we listen to? You know, we, we consume a lot, and mm. I don't know if there is much that's really positive. I mean, you get the odd standout song, like, for me, I'm thinking Pharrell, Freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of like, you know. But then, other than that, even something like Don't Trip On Me, The Game, which is off the new album, is very much about life. Yeah. So on one hand, it can be seen as positive in that he's speaking what he knows, but at the same time, it's not really promoting anything to kind of... Do you know what I'm I, saying? I, I, I hear what you're saying, what, to uplift or... To necessarily, all right, the beat is fat, but... Yeah, where's the message in that? Yeah, where's the message? Saying. But so, it depends on, I reckon it depends on who's listening for what message. Obviously, you can't give something, something negative out, but at the same time, you've got to kind of um, give what's coming from inside. So it's not always going to be positive. You know what I mean? I do believe in positive music, firstly, before anything else. Mm -hmm. But at the same time... If you're going to express yourself, whatever comes from within, if it's positive or negative, you get me? Then it's what it is. Yeah, it's what it is. But it's your job as an artist to kind of know that if you're putting out something out there, you know, it's your responsibility to give something 
that's not going to be negative towards people, really. And this is the thing, right? If you're, I, I think you summed it up perfectly. What you're putting out as an artist, you have to be prepared to kind of carry that. And I think that's kind of what I was implying before, saying, you know, as long as it's true to what you're about, I suppose you can probably say there's a positive message in that. Can you? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But I mean, all right, so how important is it that you're kind of, the world sees you in the way that you want it to see you? I don't think the world can ever see you how you want, your, want to be seen yourself. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got their own perception of you. So yep. at the end of the day, I just, I would say just do you and, you know what I mean? Not try to hurt anybody, just try to do what you got to do. And if they grasp that, they grasp that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if they grasp that and it's a positive message, you've done your job. No, no, so, I mean, as someone up and coming, mm. how, how important is it for you for people to kind of get you? They need to understand that you like, I, I need to be able to be help, hold accountable for all my lyrics. So if I'm saying uh, this happened, happened, it has to, make, it has to be sure, like I have to be, it has to be true. Yeah. So, you know, like I don't want anyone to hear one of my raps and then see me as a different person. I'm not this type of street guy, so I'm not going to portray that in my mm. music, you know. So do you think it's important that people see you for who you really are? Because yeah. you hear it a lot, don't you? A lot of rappers say, he's talking about it, he even lived on the street, or whatever but it is. That's true. Some people <laughs> don't even understand how important it is to make sure that you're relaying the truth, you know, something that's, that's happened to you. If you can story tell, if you can talk about someone else's um, situation like I do sometimes, that's, that's okay as well, but as long as you're storytelling. Right. But don't, don't lie, you know. Don't make, don't it, make it sound like <laughs> yeah, 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 don't yeah. lie. But then how do you differentiate between what is something that you've observed mm. and what is your reality? Because, you know, someone listening to a rap might not necessarily know that you're telling somebody else's. They might just presume that this is your story and what are you talking about because you haven't come from that background. Well, that's, that's another way as well. Like, maybe the artist just makes you want to think about it, but I don't know. If he, does, he, hasn't, if he hasn't claimed that it's him, then mm. we can't really point fingers, you know. That's so. True. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, what do we think of the lyrical content in music today, just generally? And let's just pick hip hop and R and B because that's what we play predominantly on the station. Hmm. There's like two different types. There's like the people that really want to rap. I'm not going to say no names. And there's like the <laughs> the ones that want to get the sales and who just want to make the party go crazy. And there's nothing wrong with with it, though. To be honest, like sometimes lyrics can just be there for having fun, you know, yeah. like, or just, just for a party anthem. But me personally, I like to listen to stories. That's just my preference. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't mind <laughs> if it's at like a party. No, I'll, I'll listen to anything. No, I hear you. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, when we actually sit down and step back and mm. think, because we all do, we all go out, you just want to hear, like, the beat more than you're not mm. really entertaining the lyrics. Yeah. But when we actually sit back and listen, I mean, I know there's this big thing about, like, music is emotive. It, it makes you feel things. It can encourage you to do That's things. So, so, true. so if... If that is the case, then if music is negative, what is that kind of doing to us? It's, Do you see what I mean? So mm. we're absorbing all this negativity. Mm. You know, where does that kind of, you know, where does that kind of leave us? Mm -hmm. Mm. It's true. It's difficult, isn't it? Because it's sort of like, how do you Deep? decide what you're going to listen to and what you're not? I'm sorry, did I take it too deep? No, <laughs> this, this is serious. No, yeah. I feel like, um, like I said before, there's a responsibility for what you put out there.